Let's start. All right, <laughs> take two. Okay, hi guys, welcome to um, my immunology TLDR. So uh, I got a bunch of my friends to just help me vet through these slides to make sure I'm not spouting absolute rubbish. Uh, yeah, but um, just, just a disclaimer at the start, okay. Um, I'm not the number one person to go and look for to go and uh, um, for immunology, okay. And but these are kind of the stuff that I realized like a few of us as MRs we struggled with to like just grasp like basic concepts and stuff. So um, this part is this this session is really just like starting from ground zero and building up accordingly, okay. So it's an overview, um, yeah. So is immunology high yield? Not really. And that's the honest truth. So if you want to leave, feel free to go ahead and leave. If you don't want to study it, feel free to go ahead and not study it. Because I mean, at least for us, we only have about five, six questions in our, um, in our M1 exam. But uh, I feel that if you understand what the heck is going on in M1, then in M2, this will be a little less painful than it is. Because M2 is going to be M1 stuff and more. Okay? Sorry to say that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you can't really skip it. Yeah. And so one thing that, okay, this is some pro tip for whoever is listening to this. Uh, low year doesn't mean no you. Um, like for example, if you guys have heard from your counselors or your uh, seniors, we got tested on something that was like a single lecture worth in one whole MEQ of 20 marks. Um, if the St. John's what one. So really, Low you doesn't mean no you, okay? Just, just my pro tip out there, but we all can't really be perfectionists, okay? We, we don't really have the time to be perfectionists. So um, if you have other stuff to study, if you haven't mastered your physio, if you haven't mastered your anat, go and study that first. Immuno shouldn't be up or down on your priority for CA2, okay? And yes, foundation is important. And that's why my approach for today is going to be um, from the bottom up, okay? I'm going to answer some very simple questions that, uh, some, some very simple concepts, um, but I hope it makes things clearer for y'all. So y'all understand it more than just like, okay, I don't know what's going on, but I'll just try to memorize, okay? Any questions, feel free to, okay, I can, you can ask it in the chat or unmute, all right? Yeah, so if you're down, if everyone's down here, all the 24 of y'all, okay, let's begin. Okay, so the session, right, today we're just going to address confusing definitions, okay, that honestly, some of the folks, they just kind of throw, just start throwing them out and then you're like, what the heck is going on? And that was me last year. So we're going to address these now so that hopefully you have a better idea what's going on. We're going to go through my immunology TLDR, which is, um, wait, let me use my laser pointer. Oh, yay. My immunology TLDR, um, which is the diagram that I sent to the group. Uh, we are addressing other misconceptions along with that, and then um, along with that, the higher these are just lumped together, lah, okay? So let's start with definitions. So what's a cytokine? Okay, I think some of y'all really just um, are wondering this, like, um, yeah, sorry. So a cytokine is essentially a signaling molecule, okay? It's not a cell, it's not a white blood cell, it's not a red blood cell, it's a signaling molecule. And it's how immune cells talk to one another. So they are produced by the immune cells. Okay. So there's a few terms that they're going to throw out there, like pro-inflammatory pro -inflammatory cytokines. As the name suggests, right, it is released during inflammation process. So you will learn it and two inflammation has stuff like your fever, pain, redness, swelling whatsoever. So these um these cytokines do a lot of things within the inflammation process, like increase the action of other cells maybe to they just they just tell each other like okay we need to go and tackle or like attack this bacteria so on and so forth so that's the whole point of cytokines because that's that's their way of communicating you want this thing called cytokine storm okay when you think of storm it's really quite a bad thing and it's basically a life-threatening systemic inflammatory syndrome where the innate immune system because um in the case of inflammation, it's very general, right? Like you see like the redness, it's not like, it's, you won't see it like everywhere, you see it locally, right? And then basically it causes uncontrolled excessive release of these cytokines. 
So the one that new the the energy that new gave here is like you get 33 minutes calls from one because basically um there's a lot of communication of like these signals going towards your cells in that sense. Okay. And then it either it causes an overreaction in a sense. So the cytokine storm actually, I if I'm not wrong, you will see it in um in uh infections like your dengue viral infections and stuff so instead of cytokines being like good because you know you're communicating with your other um um white blood cells and stuff like beep, 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 like instead you are causing too much of a reaction in a sense in some cases chemokine is a type of cytokine okay and this induces movement called chemotaxis or immune cells towards cell infection so um it's kind of like, uh, let's say the firefighters, the, the, okay, let's say there's a, there's a big fire at uh, Bedok MRT, okay? And then there are only three firefighters on site. Then basically, um, the firefighters go and call for backup. That's the idea of like chemokine. So you will call for backup and then more cells, like your macrophages, your neutrophils, they will be induced to go towards the inflammation site, okay? And then this causes an increased like immune response. Okay, number two, what's a follicle? So this one is a bit of a toughie. Okay, like a primary lymphoid follicle. Okay, this one you can see your lymphoid tissue, um, uh, lymphoid tissue sites for this. But essentially, this is what you need to know. A primary lymphoid follicle is made out of small dormant B lymphocytes, and the secondary one is. B cells that have been activated already. So you have B cells, dendritic cells, T alpha cells. And if you remember, dendritic cells are your antigen presenting cells. Okay, we'll go into that later and hopefully you can come back and try and link it back. Okay, so this was just a lymphoid structure if you want to see. Um, yeah, so this is a lymph node. Um, I don't think it's so important for now. Uh, in M2, they'll explain a bit more of like how the T cells migrate to the lymph node and then the dendritic cells present the, the present antigen so on and so forth. Okay, so it's not so important for now. So it's just for um for fun, okay? Okay, and this this is a very um very standard question, but what is a lymphocyte? Okay, so lymphocyte basically consists of T cells, B cells. And, and natural killer cells, okay? If you notice the T cells, you have T helper cells and cytotoxic T cells. Cytotoxic T cells, they basically act like NK, now natural killer cells, NK cells, but your cytotoxic T cells um, are part of the adaptive immune system. They are a bit more specific than natural killer cells, which are just like serial killers. You just go around and kill, kill things, okay? And what's the difference between lymphocyte and leukocyte, okay? Yeah, so leukocytes is white blood cells. So it's your lymphocytes and your myeloid cells. Your myeloid cells is basically everything else. Your neutrophils, mast cells, eosinophils, basophils, monocytes, or like macrophages and dendritic cells. Okay, it's basically everything else. But lymphocytes themselves are the ones that are more adaptive immune system and natural killer cells. So those, that's the difference between the two. Okay, um, hope everyone's following. Okay. Wait, did I? Okay, wait. Uh, complement system. Okay, wait. Uh, can I ask if you guys learned about the complement system? Anyone? Just can you answer in the chat? Because I can't remember if I learned it M two or M one. That's why I'm not sure if I wanted to put in this answer. Can someone just answer me in the chat? Very briefly. Um. Okay. So I just leave it as the complement system essentially is one way for um, your cells to recognize to recognize the pathogen or it's another way of just like the complements they just like let's say um, there's there's a there's like let's say a receptor here and the complement binds to it and then just causes like the cell apoptosis there's a lot of things that the complement system does, but I think maybe for M1, I would want to confuse you all first. Um, I think we forgot to finish this slide. Up. I'm so sorry about it. 
and um, but very briefly, it's part of the innate immune system. I'm not wrong because it just induces cell apoptosis. That's one of the mechanisms among, among many. Okay. Okay. Still, we're still on definitions. Okay. I think some of you are still confused between antigen and antibodies. Okay. Antigen generates an antibody response. Okay. This is the thing that you came up with, or maybe that's the actual thing. So. It's a molecule recognized by the immune system. Okay, it's not the cell itself, it's the molecule. Okay, directs an antibody response. And infections are caused by non cell antigens because you wouldn't have uh, things that bacteria express on their cell, um, on their cell wall, their cell membrane. So, bacteria, the, the things that bacteria express on their cell membrane won't be the same as the human ones. But self antigens exist. And this is needed in your maturation of the T cells, which I'll go through later. Okay. Yeah, we'll go through this later. Antibodies bind to a neutralized antigen, mostly produced by B cells. In particular, right? Remember um, which type of B cells? Plasma cells. Because B cells, remember when they undergo clonal expansion, they form plasma cells and memory cells. Memory cells do not produce antibodies. Okay. Um, and plasma cells do. Okay, well, we'll go to that a bit later. IgM is the one that's produced during the infection. IgG is produced later, and IgG is the most common serial antibody. Um, we'll go through the, the, what's that, the different isotypes of antibodies later on. And yes, IgG is the only one that crosses the placenta. That's why in your baby, you will actually, for the first three months, you, okay, around the first three months, uh, you will have maternal antibodies, so the baby will kind of have the same degree of immunity as the mother, but only for the first few months, then the antibodies will all either be excreted or disintegrate, and then the baby has to create its own antibodies, okay? So, um, anyone has any questions so far? If not, I'm going to shift over to my iPad and show you all the diagram. Anyone? Hello, Martin. Nice to see you. Okay, wait. Uh, let's go to the diagram. It's okay. No worries. Thanks for joining me. Uh, please, please correct me if I'm wrong, okay? If, if anything. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Woo! Okay. <laughs> let's talk about immunology TLDR, okay? So, um, uh, okay, let's, let's use a red thing and then I'll create a new layer. Okay, let's start from the start. Okay, uh, wait, okay, let me just keep the chat up here so that I can see. Now, I didn't miss much. Um, okay, so we first start with um, the very basics of innate immunity. I hope you all managed to like download or able to annotate, okay? Is everyone okay? Like, have y'all, can, can, y'all need time to download it? Yeah, okay, yeah. It's found on the chat. Sorry. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's found on the chat. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, no one's complaining. Okay. So, um, let's talk about that one in you know, for chat. Okay, and this is my IG. If you want to follow me, Shana's part. Okay, moving on. So, you have your pathogen. Wait. Hello. Why is it lagging? Okay. Okay, your pathogen is evil. It's, it's, it's scheming to go and cause destruction in your body. And first thing it encounters is it encounters a brick wall in the form of a physical barrier. Okay? So physical barriers, like, mainly one, the, the first thing that you think of is just your skin. Your skin is amazing because it can literally just block up a lot of your pathogens, like 99% 90, 90, of them. That's why you have, like, bacteria that literally sit on your skin and they can't infect you at all, okay? So they encounter your physical barrier or they encounter chemical barriers. This includes your acid in your stomach. So essentially, um, low pH, okay? Your tears secrete lysozymes. Um, so these, like, break down certain so bacteria, mucus also. Mucus, remember in your respiratory tract, you have uh, goblets, those... Um, goblet cells, so they secrete mucus, and then your cilia sweep the mucus back up so you can spit it or sneeze it out. 
So that's one of the barriers also. Okay. Um, so, but then there's a problem. This guy here, let me just make him a bit more angry. Okay, this guy here, he is very good and he can just get through these both of these barriers and somehow gets into the bloodstream or something. That's where you bring across your cellular components or innate immunity. So what, what I just wanted to show you is what do the cells involved do, okay? So basophils uh, are found in plasma. Okay, the basophils and mast cells essentially do the same thing. But basophils are found in plasma, that means your, your blood, okay? And your mast cells are found in tissues. That this is like majority, okay? Yes, lysozymes act on bacteri bacterial peptidoglycan. Okay, peptidoglycan is your cell wall. Okay, yeah, thanks, Martin. Um, so um, these two cause secretion of histamine from the granules, which honestly uh, do a lot of things. They act as histamine can act as a, as a chemokine. It can recruit more cells. It's a lot of things that histamine can do. Histamine is also what causes your, um, you know, whenever you get a like a mosquito bite and then you get a little bump on your skin and then follow very redness around. Yeah, that's caused by histamine as well, like indirectly because it, yeah, it does a few things, but you learn that in too, so don't worry about it. Okay. Eosinophils are mainly used in allergic responses and anti-parasitic activities. So parasites include like your worms, tapeworms, uh, malaria, the, the sorry, what's the, what's the name of the plasmodium uh, parasite in malaria, etc. etc. You you you'll learn that a bit more in M2. Okay. Natural killer cells are cytotoxic cell killing. They are, they, 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 are, they kill cells. They are, they are cytotoxic in nature and they kill cells. Uh. And this is especially for tumor cells, if anything, okay? Which is quite interesting. Um, then meanwhile, we have monocytes. So monocytes, right? Okay, so monocytes differentiate into the three below. You have dendritic cells, macrophages, and microglia. Monocytes are in blood, and the moment they go into the tissues, you call them macrophages. And... In general, they also differentiate the dendritic cells. Dendritic cells are very obvious. They got these very nice tentacle-like things, okay? Ah, yes, okay. Um, let me just add it in for the sake. Um, plus virus infected cells. For the sake of the people who can't see the chat, lah, because they're watching the recording, okay? So, macrophages and microglia. Microglia is in the CNS, okay? So, you see them in your brain. So, in your, like, in your brain tissue or like your meninges in the head, you won't really see macrophages. You see microglia. I mean, yeah. Okay? They are part of the glial cell bunch. Uh. And they're main, the main cells that phagocytose. So, what phagocytosis is, is essentially you eat the bacteria, you engulf it whole, and then you digest it from the inside using your uh, lysosomes. So engulf plus digest. Okay. Uh, we're keeping it simple for now, okay? As I said, the main thing is you want to get a general idea of what the hell is going on first. All right? Everyone okay? If everyone's okay, can you give me a thumbs up so far? I'm a bit, I'm worried I'm a bit too fast. <laughs> right? Thumbs up. Okay, thank you. Oh, yes, my career is kind of tissue resistant microfish. Oh, yes. Uh, I forgot to add here, okay? Um, if you want to talk about uh, macrophages in the lung, the alveolar macrophages, if you want to talk about lip, um, uh, macrophages in the liver, they're called Kupfer cells. Kupfer cells, you have K U P F F E R cells. And this is liver. And then you have your alveolar macrophages. Uh, and this is in your lung. Okay, now we have all this, right? And now we want to bridge because, okay, these, these cells generally help in the immunity, okay? But you want to find out, like, in the event that innate immunity, innate immunity is just like, 
it's like you know it's like you are at war and you have a city and you're gonna just you're just gonna bomb the general city you don't really care whether it's an army base or like some random civilians you're just gonna bomb it but sometimes you will miss the the, the key the key like root of the problem like let's say the enemy air base or something and that's where we really want to go and send the fighter jets in to go and target those specific areas and that's why we need the adaptive immune system because they're more specialized so how you link innate immunity and adaptive immunity is via this bridge okay i mean i tried this is this is water okay <laughs> um so we have different kinds of apcs apcs are antigen um presenting cells okay so we have professional and non-professional apcs okay um and the difference between the two is professional apcs present mhc2 and mhc1 okay so mhc right is a major histocompatibility major histocompatibility complex so what they do is essentially i mean some of y'all might learned it before but i'm just gonna say it. um essentially it's a polypeptide that basically holds the antigen out there to the T cells later on and say, hey, this is the antigen, you need to react to it. And so there are two types, okay? Uh, MAC2 um, is recognized or is bind to CD4 T alpha cells, and MAC1 is recognized and binds to CD8 plus T, 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 T cells. And then they cause reactions, reactions that happen um, later on. So professional APCs, right? Um, the main ones that you want to focus on are your dendritic cells, your monocytes plus plus. That means your macrophages, your Kupffer cells, all the different types of um, phagocytosing, phagocytosing cells. My English is terrible. And it does. It also includes your B cells, which we will get to later. Okay. So they present both MAC two and one, so they can activate both CD four plus and CD eight plus. Non-professional APCs are all nucleated cells. So can anyone give me an example of a cell that uh, is unable to present even MHC1? Anyone? Red blood cells, very good. So, so RBCs, so yeah. RBCs are no nucleus, they cannot present MHC1, okay? For the most part, lah. some of them are weird, but yeah, we simplify things, okay? So these cells are able to present MHC2 and MHC1. Okay, so let's talk about hmm, how should we do this? Um okay, let's talk about okay, no, let, let's let's go to T cell development first, okay? Um this is just an extra bit here, sorry. PEMs and DEMs, these are Pathogen associated molecular patterns. Oh yes, fun fact: platelets present MHC as well, and we have no idea why, but we they do. Um, is it pathogen associated molecular patterns, Martin? Yes, right. Yeah. Um, let me just write that out. Pattern pathogen associated molecular proteins eh shit uh patterns sorry and the same thing for d is instead of pathogen is is basically the same thing but damage so the difference between the two is pathogen associated molecular patterns are basically um things that pathogens have so like your these antigens or molecules unique to the pathogen like your bacteria your virus Meanwhile, your dams are produced by our own cells because our own cells are being attacked by the pathogens and then they secrete stuff as well. So that's why they, we are damaged. So it's damaged associated molecular patterns. And they stimulate innate immunity and the complement system, but I won't go too much into that, okay? It's a bit too much at this age. Okay, let's talk about T cell development. So the T cells need to develop, but then and then the T cells have receptors, they have everything, but how the heck did they even start that in the first place? So, 
that's why we need to know where they start from. And for, what we start is progenitor T cells, so like the precursors, like the the little teenagers starting to go and like join NS and fight for your country. And they're formed in the bone marrow, okay? And so they migrate to the thymus. And what happens here is what you call a cell peptide cell antigen test. Let's break down this word, okay? Um, so cell peptide, okay, wait, uh, Martin, can you correct me on this? I can't, I'm not sure if I'm 100% correct, okay? Cell peptide is, uh, wait, Martin, do you mind just helping me with this? I don't want to say something wrong. Uh, sorry, I'm not quite sure, but I'm pretty sure that, wait, I'm not quite sure, but I think that self peptide would be peptides that you, that you yourself as a host will create. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think so also. I just want to make sure I'm like, in you. Um, you. And self antigen test, I feel like, I feel like they're the same thing. I've not actually heard this term before, to be honest. Okay. Uh, but I found this in the slide somewhere. So, okay, I'm just gonna assume it. I'm just gonna assume that. I'm just gonna trust the slides on this. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, don't need to worry about the name of the test. Okay, but the main thing that you need to understand from this is how clingy are you? So, um, essentially, right in the thymus, they split the T cells that are teenagers, they're going to be exposed to self peptides, like basically, um, what do you call it? Um, little molecules that are produced by our body. So they're like your, your friends, okay? Your, your, your squad mates and stuff, okay? So then it undergoes positive and negative selection. For B cells and T cells, they both undergo positive and negative selection. So how this works is, firstly, they ask you two questions, okay? Um, so, are you clinging enough? Is there enough attachment to the self peptide? If there's not enough attachment, you will die. It's like you're trying, you're in the case where, um, okay, I don't really want to go on this. Uh, I don't really want to go on this, uh, what do you call it? Army analogy too much. But essentially, it's a positive selection. So if you are clean enough, that means is there some affinity to the self peptide? If yes, then you progress, you pass the test. So this is positive selection. Okay. If you are not clean enough and you just don't like to touch the self peptide at all, and then you just die by apoptosis. So the T cell will just self destruct. Meanwhile, after that, you will go through negative selection. So are you too clingy? Is the is the T cell receptor too clingy to the um to the self peptide? That means does it bind too strongly? If yes, it will also die. If it's no if it's not as clingy, then it will progress on and mature to become a T cell, like a mature T cell. And so this is the idea of negative selection because you want to it's kind of like if you had a girlfriend, you want to hold hands to your girlfriend. You don't want to not hold hands to your girlfriend and all others, your girlfriend will feel neglected. But you also don't want to hold your girlfriend's hand too much until the girlfriend's like, please let go, I need to eat my food. Then you're like, no, I want to hold your hand. And then and that's just never going to work. Lah, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry, that's the only energy I can think of. Uh, yeah. And so basically, if it passes the positive and negative selection test, you differentiate based on the affinity to self peptide MHC one or two. So if it's if it's more if it has a high affinity for MHC one, then it will become a CD eight cytotoxic T cell. If it's two, then a CD four plus. Okay, everyone okay? Thumbs up. Is all right? Oh no. Okay. I see some thumbs up. Okay, moving on, moving on. Um, so let's talk about, let's not, so now that we covered T cell development, I'm going to talk about CD8 first, okay? So CD8, you present your, um, you present your MVC1 to CD8, okay? And CD8 secretes two things, granzymes and perforin. Perforin 
forms pores in the cell membrane, as you can see by this very cute thing here. Okay. And it basically allows granzymes. Granzymes, literally, you see zymes here, the enzyme. So, what it does is it digests the intracellular components. And the pores allow, like, they help la, because they allow that little, like, digestive molecules to go into the cell and digest it intracellularly. And this causes pathogen death, which is what we want to achieve. Okay. Second thing is we're going to talk about, okay. Second thing is we're going to talk about CD4 T alpha cells. And this brings in your B cells. Remember, your B cells are not involved in the action of your CD8 cytotoxic. These guys just want to kill. So they can act on their own. They're lone rangers, they're assassins, they're whatever you want to call them that like, they don't require an army. Okay? CD4 T helper cells, okay, require the help of B cells because they activate B cells. So let's talk about B cell development first. So um b cells same thing another teenage kids they are developed formed in the bone marrow and they undergo an antibody function test and that's where they mature so if you remember the antibodies right you have your light chain and your heavy chain these are the chromosomes that they produce are not so important i just put it in for completion okay um and because of the randomization of the variable region, they contribute to junctional diversity and thus FAB diversity. Remember AB, uh, is it antigen binding? Martin, sorry. FAB is antigen binding. Yeah, so this is basically the part of the antibody. So like, uh, let's, let's, just, let's just do this. Am I, am I doing this right? I hope I'm doing this right. Okay. Um, hold on. Quick one. Quick sketch here. Okay. So let's say you have like this is your FC and this bit here is your FAB because FAB stands for antigen binding. So it's the side of the antibody that binds the antigen. Lah. Martin, all good? Okay. So, basically the heavy chain is produced and we are asking, is the heavy chain functional? Because if it is not functional, there's no point moving on to go and produce the light chain. So this positive selection, if it's functional, yes, then the light chain forms. If it's not, then you just kill the cell. Because the cell is useless. Even if you form the whole antibody, the antibody is going to be kind of useless because it's not very functional. Okay? Then the light chain forms. And that's it. That's why now you have the total antibody. And then you want to say, is the mature B cell receptor? Wait. Wait. Is it antibody or B cell receptor? Did I make a mistake? Martin. A B cell receptor is an antibody. All right. All right. Oh yeah, but it's just stuck to the membrane, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So it's the mature B cell receptor and um I'm just gonna add here la basically the antibody. Is it autoreactive? That means is it reactive to our own antigens, like the the the, the molecules present on our own bodies, on our own cells? Of course, right? And this is I forgot to add here. This is a negative selection. Okay, because of course it's autoreactive, right? Yes. You need to get rid of it. Otherwise, it's going to cause a whole bunch of mayhem inside your cells. If it's not autoreactive, then your B cell is going to be released in the bloodstream. And that's where we come to here. So the T helper cells, through various mechanisms, they they activate the B cells to undergo what we call clonal expansion. Okay, so clonal expansion develops two things: plasma cells, which secrete your antibodies. So it's like a wizard hat. I don't know how to draw a wizard. Okay, and it shoots out antibodies. It produces a whole bunch of antibodies to go and like either neutralize the pathogen or kill it via apoptosis, a whole bunch of mechanisms, okay? But the memory cells don't. 
Okay, the plasma cells produce antibodies and cause pathogen death, but the memory cells don't produce antibodies. What they do is they basically stay for longer. The plasma cells die very early, but like memory cells stay there. They remember this is the antibody that I want to produce if I ever see this enemy again. And so if there's like a secondary immune response, they will induce clonal expansion. But instead of having to go through this whole chain all over, this whole development all over again, now we already have some soldiers already ready on site waiting to see the same enemy and attack because it knows how to attack it because it knows what the antibodies are so it increases the speed and the efficacy of the secondary immune response one thing to add here is your follicular dendritic cells so this is special okay these are not your normal dendritic cells these are your follicular dendritic cells they present these things called icosomes which are which are which have your naive B cells, which are recognized by the B cell receptors on your naive B cells. And what these do is the naive B cells take this and actually they take these antigens. They pull them out and they take these antigens and they present it on the MHC2. Two. And MHC2, you can present it to CD4 T helper cells. And that's how you can also stimulate an immune response. So that's just another side way lah, if you want to know about icosomes and stuff. Otherwise, this is pretty much a TLDR or whatever the heck you need to know for now. Okay? <sighs> Everyone alive? Okay. Also a good concept to know is that the T cells usually only recognize antigen that's presented at MHC. Unlike B cells that can recognize antigen that's just free floating in extracellular fluid. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Martin. Um, okay, is everyone all right? Everyone okay? Alive? Am I? Anything you want to clarify? I'll see what I can do. Okay, I'm going to transfer back to my previous. Okay, let me just uh, go back to my sites. Okay. Can you see? Okay. Moving on to this bit. Uh, yes. What's the difference between icosomes and regular antigens? Uh, Martin, you want to explain this? Otherwise, I will have my very simplified explanation for this. Um, you can try your simplified explanation first. I'm still looking through because I'm not. <laughs> I might have forgotten. Okay. So, icosomes, I mean, according to what I see from Prof. McCary's slides, it's essentially. I don't know how they develop, but basically the follicular, follicular, follicular dendritic cells present this little like um, this little big molecule with a whole bunch of antigens on them. So instead of um, maybe it's I don't know I don't know how the icosome arises from, but it's basically it's like uh, let me think of an analogy. Um, like a yakitori, no. Uh, what's a good analogy for this? It's like a yakitori. It's like a yakitori stick, which like has a whole bunch of like chicken on it. Then your your B cell will come here and go and eat one chicken. It's not going to eat the whole stick, but it's going to eat one chicken and then present it. Regular antigens, um, are kind of like a bit more not not as congregated together onto like one area like the yakitori is like if somebody just decided to give free food and throw all the chicken on the ground then the b cells are like a very hungry person which is like whatever chicken i can find i'm just gonna take it and eat it <laughs> does that make sense martin what do you think Actually, I don't think like Prof. McGarry described the formation of the ecosome yeah, in see, detail. Yeah. He basically mentioned it was just like essentially something like how am I supposed to say this? A bunch of antigens, but they are like on I guess protein structures that are part of that are like extended through like dendrites formed from the membrane of the cell. Uh, I think that's a, that's, that's a lot to take in. Um. 
Are there extensions of the cytosol? Somebody asked. I think you can think of them as pseudopodia. What the heck is pseudopodia? Like, okay, fine. Extensions of the cytosol. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, the things that... You know what? Let me take a look, okay? Sorry, let me go and... Okay, we'll, 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 we'll get back to you on this, okay? Sorry. Um, yeah. But very simply, I think that's more you can look at it now. Okay, let's, let's go on first. Uh. So... One question, can antigens be directly be recognized by adaptive immune cells? T cells cannot directly bind to antigens, okay? They bind to MHC because they... MHC is like your travel adapter because your T cells have no idea what the heck is going on to, in terms of like, you go to a new country, you have no idea what their culture is, what their adapter is. So you need the, the travel adapter, which is your MHC, to go and present the peptide so the T cells know, ah, I need to bind to this. B cells can, as, as uh, Martin mentioned earlier, they can bind directly to antigen 5 B cell receptors. So they do not recognize MHC. They don't bind to MHC, but they can bind the antigens directly. But they have MHC to present antigens. Because, yeah. yeah, so antibodies are essentially B cell receptors that are not attached to the B cell. I think that's quite interesting. And one fun fact human leukocyte antigen, HLA, it's the exact same thing as major histocompatibility compatibility complex or MHC. So they're literally the same thing. Well, HLA and MHC, I don't know why they are two different names for that. But yeah, they mean the same thing. But you don't say HLA1 or HLA2 normally. La. Like HLA class 1, HLA class 2. You don't normally use it. You use MHC. So yeah. So sometimes we like to throw it show you funny pictures in the exam, immature, that then the moment they receive the antigen, eh? They engulf the pathogen the first time, then they present the stuff, okay? And, yeah, I have to go through this. Oh yeah, I've already gone through this. So, pans come from pathogens, and dens come from damaged host cells, like a tumor cells, damaged dead cells. Okay, well, we, 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 let's not go into this. This is only if you're interested to know what the heck is going on. This is M2 stuff, okay? So I really don't want to, to, to scare you guys here. All right. So number nine, are both plasma and memory cells involved in directly eliminating a pathogen? Wait, let me see what I can do. Um, hmm. Ah, okay. So the question is whether they're directly eliminating a pathogen. And so if you remember, B cells can differentiate into plasma or memory cells. So memory cells, they don't secrete antibodies, right? So they don't directly eliminate a pathogen. They just stay for long-lasting immune memory. And so then they can multiply directly, uh, multiply rapidly to create any subsequent secondary infection. So instead of having to go through the whole MHC, has to present the cell to the T helper cell, T helper cell, go and activate B cell. You can, the memory cells can directly recognize, oh shucks, the ant Mr. Antigen is back and I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna undergo clonal expansion and kill everything else. Okay, which cell produce MAC1 and MAC2, professional produce MAC2 and MAC1. Okay, they produce both. So they induce CD4 plus T helper cell activity and CD8 plus Cytotoxic T cell activity. Non professional APCs produce only MHC1, so red blood cells do not produce MHC1 or MHC2, so they do not activate a secondary immune response. Uh, sorry, uh, adaptive immune response. Okay? Antigen presenting cells. Yeah. So, how you can memorize this is MHC2 is like too professional, and MHC1. <laughs> I don't know why new created this site, but yeah. Uh, this is just something to memorize, okay? So 2 and CD4, 1 and CD8, okay? It's like, how do you get 8? You do 1 times 8 and 2 times 4. Okay, no mind, I'm confusing you guys too much. Okay, difference between natural killer cells and cytotoxic CD8 T cells. Because, I mean, you, you think about it, they both kill the pathogens via your granzymes and your perforins and stuff. So natural killer cells are component innate immune system and they don't need MHC. They probably have receptors or something that say, ah, you are something I want to kill. 
and you just go there and you just go and stab the guy to death. You stab the cell to death. You know, the cytotoxic cell requires your MHC1 to be presented first. Then it can go ahead and go and start killing those um, specific cells. Uh, I'll, sorry, I'll go and check the chat in a bit. Um, they both have similar functions, right? But NK cells, especially important for tumor cells, and CDA plus is more for intracellular infections, like for example, viral intracellular pathogens. Because normally what viruses do is instead of just floating in your body as a virus, right? It can't really survive like that on its own. So what it does is it invades the cell and hides within the cell. And then multiplies within the cell itself. Then it exits the cell, goes and infects another cell, and that's how it spreads. Okay? So the idea is that CD8 T plus CD8 plus T cells are more used for intracellular pathogens, like your viruses and certain bacteria, like your mycoplasma. Okay, it's great. <laughs> Moving on. Can we just see the chat, huh? Oh. Okay. Oh yes. Uh is there definitely dendritic cells and follicle dendritic cells? So dendritic cells are the professional antigen preventing cell. Follicular dendritic cells are antigen preventing cells to specifically B cells, as we mentioned. Okay. And okay, I guess this explains it a bit, or is this the same of what I said just now? So they tell the icosomes using their B cell receptors, and then they present it to T alpha cells, which is what we mentioned in the in the big mind map, okay. I think that's the, that's 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 as much as you want to let you know for now. And they like to show this kind of funny picture in there, and I won't be surprised. Um, I won't be surprised. It's always the exact same picture. Yeah, they 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 even should they they put this question in our exam also, right? Paul McCurry likes to use the pictures from the slides in there. La. So this is a follicular dendritic cell and these are your B cells. So just look at this. Okay, these little things trapped there, these are icosomes. They look like what's that? What's that thing? It looks uh Okay, there's nothing coming to mind. Adam Ami? Okay, I'm ruining food for you guys. Never mind. Let's move on. <laughs> what the heck is a flow cytometry? Okay, this came out for exam. And like there's probably one slide in Prof and Carrie's slide that, that talks about this. But it came out for exam and he used the exact same picture that he used in his uh slides also. Uh not saying that he's gonna always do that, but yeah, seems to be a trend. So So um, let's use, so essentially flow cytometry helps to basically separate the CD4 plus and the CD8 plus T cells. Uh, T cells, so your CD4 plus your T helper cells, your CD8 plus is your cytotoxic T cells. And so basically it's like a graph, la. it's like a scatter plot graph. So the more dots you see on a certain area, that means the more of that specific cell there is, okay? So diseases, okay, this is um, something that I wanted to raise and you'll learn this in M2 again, but this is something that might come out, okay? Diseases like HIV cause immune suppression because they destroy the CD4 T helper cells. So there's a lot of coordination of immune response and that's why we call the, the little, the, the dude like immunosuppressed because the adaptive immune system is screwed up. Yeah, it, it just doesn't work. And results in a poor response from cytotoxic T cells and B cells as well. So this is, the diagram shows a reduction in your CD4 T helper cells versus a healthy individual on the left. And let me show you this here. So how you just look at this, right? Okay, is your CD4 plus, this is the number of cells of CD4 and the number of cells of CD8. So the moment you see like there's a decrease in like intensity of the blackness or like basically how many there are there, you will immediately realize, okay, there's a lot less CD4 than CD8. You can see your CD8 is normal, but your CD4 is not. So this is, maybe the person has AIDS, uh, uh, autoimmune, uh, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, yeah, which is caused by the HIV. And this causes depletion of CD4 plus T helper cells, as you can see, okay? That's all you need to know for flow cytometry, like it's really too complicated for us to understand and we're not going to be scientists, so this is pretty much it. Okay, last bit. 
uh, what are the different immunoglobulin isotypes? So there, there are five different types, okay? Um, IgA, IgE, IgD, IgG, IgM. Okay, you all caught that? Okay, I'm going to assume so. But IgG function is the one that's not really well understood. Lah. Okay, so the main ones are IgE, eh, IgA, IgE, IgM, and IgG. So they vary in terms of affinity and avidity. Okay. Uh, wait, Martin, can you help me differentiate between the terms? I was supposed to do it here, but I forgot. Wait. I have to check. Wait, hold on. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I, I found I found wait. the source for the follicular dendritic cells. <laughs> okay. It's, uh, it's the exact same picture in a textbook. I will send it to the chat. Okay, thanks. Uh, I think we'll explain this later when we see the table, okay? Then I can derive it from there. So T helper cells secrete the cytokines which regulate the specific acetate antibody production. So let's put this in the table, okay? IgM, IgG, IgA, IgE, IgD. IgD, we have no idea. This is like something that like people are like, okay, I think this works. Yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, IgM has many binding sites. So it has high avidity, but low affinities. Oh yeah, okay. So affinity refers to one-on-one, -on -one, how well connected, how, how, how um, strongly attached are you to like, let's say this binding site of the antibody to the antigen. How well can you hold on to the antigen? If you can't hold on very well, you have low affinity. If you can hold on quite well, you have high affinity. Avidity is more of like, like just generally, how can you bind to things? So if you have more binding sites, that means you can, you have like you have more friends, so you can turn to more people for help. That kind of thing. But avidity is like the quality of the friendship. So do, would you? If you have high avidity and low affinity, it's like having 10 friends, but they're all just friends. Now they're close to you. You want IgG, you only have one binding site. So you have only one friend, but the friend's like your best friend. And that's why you have low avidity, but you have high affinity. Okay? Uh, give me a sec. Uh, let me just check. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, sorry for waiting um so iga okay let's let's talk about igm igg remember igm is produced before igg okay i think i'll, I'll emphasize it later but so igm is involved in complement activation igg is phagocytosis pathogen neutralization so these are the ways that you can okay sorry these are the ways that um the the thing the the antibodies work okay and the cytokine regulation, honestly, this is just extra. Please do not go and memorize this now, okay? Like, yeah. Um, this is N2 stuff, all right? So something I want to raise, right, is IgE, remember it? Okay, IgE, just remember IgE. Then you got eosinophils. All the E things, right, are involved in your mast cell degranulation antiparasite. Sorry, mast cell degranulation is involved in your allergy reactions, okay? So all the E, IgE, and then eosinophil, they're not really related, but like all the E's, okay? And IgA, right, something special about this is it's produced on the mucosal barrier, okay? So IgM always precedes IgG in the immune response. IgA is secreted at mucosal sites. So um, this, how is this useful? Um, yeah, it is resistant enzymic enzymatic degradation is found on many mucosal sites. Why? So that's why, um, let's say you have a virus or a bacteria that loves to invade your body, but you think how they invade is via you eating like contaminated food or something. Then it infiltrates your body through like the gastrointestinal tract. So instead of just like tucking some random vaccine, right, to go and produce an immune response, in the bloodstream, what if you can kill the pathogen at like your gut mucosa itself? That means the gut wall. 
So what these things do, IgA is produced in the mucosal sites. So instead of giving an intramuscular vaccine, you give an oral vaccine, for example, in polio. So it increases IgA antibody so you can kill the, the pathogen, or in this case, the polio virus, before it even goes into the body itself because you can kill it in the GIT. Okay, IgA antibodies because they are allergy things, so they mean asthma and allergy episodes. And with that, that's it. <sighs> okay, um, just, just to emphasize, right, this is not everything, but this is a tier DR, and I think it will be helpful to um, just give you a better idea of what the hell is going on, okay? Whatever that happens, yeah. And with that, I think I will stop and I'll ask for questions. If anyone wants to stay and ask like any like exam tips and stuff, please feel free to. I'm happy to stay on and have a chat with y'all. Yeah, otherwise y'all can go off first if you have no questions. The recording will be sent to the chat. Uh, the, um, sorry, my brain. The recording will be sent to the chat once uh, it's finished processing. Okay. Uh, any exam tips and stuff? If not, then you can go. Um, yeah. Or you want to hear words of advice that I just told my STJ today. So. Uh, go the law principle. Do we have law? Oh yes, um, very, very unlikely that immuno is going to come out in your NEQs, okay? Very, very, very unlikely. If they, I say low yield, doesn't mean no yield, but like, I think that's a bit of a stretch, lah, huh? <laughs> okay, yeah. There are like specific autoimmunity lectures in year two, which means yes. that they are not really going to expect you to know much of that in year one. Yeah. And the proteasome mechanism of CD8 plus T cells. No, we have not been taught the specific mechanism of the uh, ubiquitin proteasome, whatever pathway. No, we haven't. So it's not important. Yeah. That's too much to learn. La. I'm going to start recording first. Okay. <laughs>